Welcome back to Keith Sensei English. My name is Keith Rains. I'll be your host and teacher. I understand it's been a long time since last we spoke. Uh, we had a few legal issues we had to clear up. However, we came out on top and here we are back again. We're going to continue with the top 30 differences between Japan and the United States countdown. Of course, we were on number 28. And seeing that we were up here in the wild, I thought I would mention number 28 difference between Japan and the United States <clears throat> is that in America, law-abiding citizens are allowed to keep and carry firearms. Usually for our protection. Today I'm up here in the mountains. There are mountain lions up here and maybe a couple of brown bears here and there. Uh, maybe a rattlesnake. But whatever it is, it's not going to hurt me. My take on firearms in the United States, yes, they're dangerous. No, I don't like that everybody has a firearm. However, we've had firearms since we kicked the British out of our country, even before then. So, for everybody to give up firearms right now, the law-abiding citizens like me would give up my firearm because I want to follow the law. However, criminals would not give up their firearms. So then, the only people in America that would have firearms are the bad people and the police. I don't think that would be a very wise solution to our problem. More gun safety, and perhaps more good people carrying guns. Anyway, enough of the politics. But in Japan, people are not allowed to carry guns. They can get a special permit to get a hunting license for a gun. Let me put this away so it doesn't shoot anybody. <clears throat> I'm going to keep the bullets in. Coming in at number 27 is quite easy. And it's very simple. It's not going to take me too long to explain to you. In, Jap in Japan... In Japan, the currency is very beautiful, of course. Here we have 10,000 yen, and that's about $10 more or less. You can look and see the exchange rate down at the bottom, down in the comments section. It's very beautiful. I'll also have some detailed pictures. Here we also have a 2,000 yen note. Hi. There are a lot of insects out here. A 2,000 yen note. This is kind of like the $2 bill in America. This is not very common, and people kind of sometimes freak out when they get a 2,000 yen bill. They check it to make sure it's real. But it's very beautiful. And of course, I'm going to give you some close-up photos, and I'm going to share them down below. Here's a 5,000 yen note. And of course, again, like I said, these are very beautiful and colorful, which is one difference between these bills in the United States. The artwork is very, very intricate. They have lots of uh, watermarks and different types of things that prevent counterfeit bills. That's the 5,000. And here we have the 10,000, which is about 100 bucks. So what's the big difference? Of course, everybody knew that the money looks different than American money. However, if you're an American, you can see that these bills, and maybe I have to get out of my chair and not fall down, these bills are not all the same size. The larger the denomination, the larger the bill. It's flat down on the bottom, yet... And that's true with most countries. However, and let me give you a big however, I hope I don't fall. American money, let me put this up. American money, <clears throat> this has been sealed. I have not tampered with it. 
American money, we have the $1 bill, which is our lowest denomination. We have a $2 bill, which is quite odd. We have lots of good intricate artwork, but it's mostly green. We have a $5 bill. Of course, I'll give you some close-ups. A $10 bill. A $20 bill. A $50 bill. And the wonderful, most counterfeited, one in the world, $100 bill. This has lots of counterfeit protection on it. Of course, it didn't used to. However, in America, we're very strange. And I'm going to get up again. I hope I don't fall. In America, it doesn't matter what the denomination of the bill is. It's all the same exact size. All the same size. And that was difference number 27. Coming in at difference number 26. I'm losing count. Is, of course, snacks. In Japan, they have a lot of different snacks than we have here in the United States. And maybe you need to consider this part one because all I have here are Japanese snacks. Maybe I'll go to the grocery store or something to show you the American snacks. So in the bag I have sitting here next to me are a bunch of snacks and I'd like to share with you some of the differences. Alright, wow. These are very very fancy uh, butter chips. So they're potato chips and but they're just butter flavored. I kind of want to try one because we're out here on a picnic. Let's, let's see how it tastes. Wow. That, <laughs> it smells buttery. And the very high end kind of very hard plastic type bag. Let's try this. If I get this, open it. Don't litter. Put it in my pocket. Put it away later. Rich butter chips. Just got finished opening them. Let's see how they taste. They really do have the flavor of like eat, biting into a baked potato or something with butter on it. Very, very tasty. Time for the next snack that they don't have in the United States. And this is This is supposed to be salt and mayo flavor. Salt and mayo flavor. Let's see how that tastes. Jeez, mm. they really do keep these closed well. Let's see how that tastes. Whoa. They certainly do keep them packed with air. Ooh. Salt and mayo. The spiders want to get a bite too. Here we go. Yeah, 
It's a little bit tart. Has a flavor of, I don't know, a hint of mayonnaise. It mostly tastes like chips to me. I'm not going to try every single chip here. However, I will show you some of them that they have and I'll take some pictures of them. And I'll put some definitions below. Here's a pizza chip. <laughs> Here's like a consomme, like a chicken stock flavor. This one is like naughty, like what they put on sushi, except it's all chopped up. Naughty flavored. Ooh, this one is uh, maybe needs a little bit of explanation, but they have a pickled plum called umeboshi in Japan. It's a very sour kind of uh, snack. And uh, they have chips flavored with umeboshi. Whoa. Lots of different chips. These are just very, very spicy flavor with hot red pepper. I think that's about it for the chips. Now moving into some of the snacks. This one's called polycorn, or at least the kind that I used to get is called polycorn. And it's almost like popcorn, except it doesn't have any of the kernels. It's like a man-made thing. And it's coated with like a brown sugar or like a molasses type thing. And this is one of my favorite snacks in Japan. Polycorn. Ah, this one is called Karinto. And it looks bad in some of the pictures you can see below. It looks like something we don't want to talk about. But it's really kind of like a wheat puff with again some of the brown sugar or molasses type sugar hardened on it. It's very very sweet, very very good. One of my favorite snacks. That's one type. As a matter of fact I'm so happy that I was able to share it with you because now I can eat them tonight. Uh oh, here's another chip. This one... Oh wow, this one is... Was <laughs> This one is a uh, wasa beef, wasa beef flavor. So I guess it's wasabi and beef. Japanese like to shorten words like talcat, wasa beef. Anyway, this is piling up down here. I hope it doesn't fall in the water. What's the next one? <clears throat> This is like a big choco bar. It's made with wheat, but it's like saturated with chocolate. <laughs> it's like soaked with chocolate and then dried. It's good. I will give some pictures of some of this stuff and I'll open it and give some descriptions as well. Because we don't have a lot of time. It looks like the sun is setting. Whoa. Oh, these are very interesting and one of my, one, another one of my favorites. They're little smoked robin eggs. You can see them, smoked robin eggs. And they're really smoky, they don't taste very eggy, <laughs> if that's a word. And they're just the perfect little snack. If you like to drink beer, a lot of people love to eat these with beer. Anyway, hit me up. Here's a small candy bar. I'll give you the translation below. It's kind of like, uh, chocolate and nuts, these nuts. All right, here is another big significant difference. Of course, it doesn't get its own number because it's in with the snacks between Japan and the United States. In Japan, they have all kinds of different Kit Kats and they have special edition Kit Kats. This one is a dark chocolate uh, Kit Kat. It even tells you that it, how much it has of uh, dark chocolate cocoa in it. This one 
is a uh, raspberry one, raspberry Kit Kat. This is piling up over here. Oh, this is a green tea Kit Kat. Green tea Kit Kat. Again, I'll be posting pictures down below. Maybe they're not there right now, but they will be. Oh, and I didn't say please subscribe, so please subscribe. Where'd my gun go? I hear a mountain lion. So you always have to put one in the chamber. False alarm. <laughs> Alright, I'll keep it close. Anyway, uh, another type of Kit Kat. Oh, I kind of figured it out just now. Sorry. This is a sweet potato flavored Kit Kat. And they also are recommending that you put it in a toaster oven or something to uh, caramelize the sugar on it and make it taste better. Make it taste more authentic. Like a big, like a sweet potato. Alright, I know you've been waiting for, oh no. Chocolate bars, there are several different chocolate companies in, in Japan. They have Meiji chocolate, which is really good. Meiji has different kinds of chocolate bars and different varieties, just like Hershey's. There's Ghana chocolate in Japan, which is one of my favorites. It's very rich, tasty. This is a milk chocolate. And here we have a Ghana uh, black chocolate that has a certain percentage of cocoa in it. I don't know what it says. It just says extra. <laughs> it just says extra. Of course, it has instructions on the back. All right. Some crazy snacks that come out of Japan. Well, not crazy, but just they're not usual for people in the United States. Are like squid. This is like a smoked and dried squid. Costs about a buck or a hundred yen at the stores there. And again, I'll show you some pictures down below. There's another type of that squid. It's like squid jerky, and it's smoky flavored, and it's really good. It's one of my favorite snacks. It's it has protein and it has less fat than like beef jerky or something. You get used to it. Here we have little cheese sticks dried of course, dehydrated so they don't go bad. Here's a small, here's a type of sausage, a dried sausage that they have. I'll define it down in the comment section again, I told you. Some more squid. Ika, they say. Here is a very strange snack that doesn't happen in, in um, America. And these are these little baby fishies. They're dried little fish. Very good for calcium. Here's some more dried uh, squid flavored, you know, snack, I guess. Another green tea type chocolate bar. And a small little chocolate wafer that they have in Japan. So basically, in Japan, they do have the same snacks. To shorten it, the Kit Kats are really cool because they have different flavors. I've had cheesecake flavored. I've had apple turnover flavor. Now sweet potato, uh, berry, and dark chocolate flavor. So there are lots. Green tea, not, I'm not a big fan of it, but a lot of people love green tea flavor. We have different flavors of chips. Of course, wasabi beef takes the cake. 
I think we have pizza flavored chips in the United States, but I haven't seen a wasabi beef flavor. Whoa. Or an umeboshi flavor. I'll put some more information about that down below. The robin eggs. The cutting dome. Sugary snack. And my polycorn. One of my favorites. Kind of like caramel popcorn without the kernels. Anyway, I hope that was educational. I'll go over maybe a little bit later and put a little addition to this video about some of the American snacks that maybe they don't have in Japan that my Japanese students will be interested in. All right. All right. Thank you, everybody, for joining me at Key Sensei English. This has been number 28, 27, and 26 from the Sierra Nevada in California, where it's nice and cool, but maybe just a little bit dangerous. Number 26, <laughs> number 28, of course, firearms. In America, we have them. In Japan, a normal citizen can't have them without a special hunting permit. Of course, the cash money, that was number 27 and number 26 being all of the wonderful snacks and different varieties that they have in Japan that they don't have in the United States. Thanks a lot. It's actually getting kind of chilly up here. I've got to get my things and go back home. But it's only about an hour away. Well, goodbye for now from the Sierra Nevada in California. Thank you for watching Key Sensei English. Coming next will be number 25 and 24 of the top 30 differences between Japan and the United States. Have a good evening or morning or afternoon, whatever it is in your part of the world. Bye-bye.